a shot in the arm, our motivational segment uh, to just bring structure and uh, direction and uh, motivation, a bit of a kick, you know, that we need uh, with Jonah Mungo. She is a life success coach, a management consultant, a workshop facilitator, management leadership trainer, and a motivational speaker. Today we're looking um, at uh, how to move from being a hustler um, you know, as a self-employed person to a business owner, right? Jonna, good morning. How are you? Good morning, V Candy. How are you doing? I'm fantastic. Awesome. Yeah. So um, from being a hustler, mm -hmm. it's different from actually being like a business owner. Totally. Yes. Totally. Because a hustler means that uh, you're self-employed and you're really getting paid on your time. So you can't take off without stopping your business. Mm -hmm. Your business has a very little chance of surviving beyond you. So what we're looking at here is, I I'm aware there are many people out there who are running businesses. I mean, almost every Zimbabwean that I know has got two or three means of earning a living, two or three hassles that are going on. But a lot of people desire to grow. They would like to get to a situation where there's some predictability in the income they are getting. Mm -hmm. They can plan and uh, they, there's a certain level of stability. So that comes with growth. <coughs> and uh, today what I want to address is that issue of growth. In other words, we want to talk about how you can grow your business. There are many, many aspects to growing your business, but I try to think of what is the most critical. We also talk about how you can set up a business that is more likely or that stands the chance, that is a high probability of outliving you, of continuing even beyond your own lifespan. We're also talking about how you can have consistent quality and standards in your business and, and how you can make sure that you have got a, a culture that is strong. In other words, there's a way of doing things. That's a strong culture. Mm -hmm. It is shared by everybody. And this can also be used as a means of training your staff, onboarding staff, so it's not a very complex thing and a lot of people think i can't do this because my business is too small but tell you what your business is, st is small because you're not doing what i'm going to be sharing with you but before we get there i have a life lesson as i said each one of these sessions i want to start with a real life lesson of something that has happened that i feel the listeners can extract a lesson from so i recently discovered to my utter surprise I don't know if you know this V Candy, mm -hmm. but in 2003, I represented Zimbabwe in the World Championship of Public Speaking. In fact, I represented Southern Africa. Oh, wow. Look and at I, you, and John. I, I came third in that competition. In Southern Africa? In, no, no, no. In the world. In the world? Yes. San Antonio, Texas, 24th of August, 2000. It was 2002, sorry. 2002. Wow. I came third in the world. And that was big news. It was covered by so many papers. It was. And. To my utter shock and surprise, in 2002, a Zimbabwean guy won the World Championship of Public Speaking. And I didn't know it. Mm. I, I would be one of the first people to know because I'm totally interested in this. And my suspicion is that a lot of the people that I know don't even know it. I mean, this is like gold medal at the Olympics of speaking. And no one knows about it. And his, his speech was entitled Ndini. This is me. Wow. It's an amazing speech. But here's the lesson I have for you, especially if you are looking at running your own hustle. Today I'm an entrepreneur. If you're an entrepreneur, don't ever expect publicity to happen by chance. No, it doesn't. Mm. So this guy did a fantastic job. He's a young man. I think he's based in Poland or somewhere there. He's a young man, brilliant, amazing speaker. But very few Zimbabweans know about this achievement which is something that really should have been shouted about mm. from every radio station, electronic so broadcasting, true. print media. I mean, this is something that should have made us so proud. It, it still makes me proud, but it's a pity that when it happened, we didn't get to know about it. So listen, in this age of social media, what you need to do is to take your own publicity into your own hands. You have absolutely no option mm -hmm. but to make sure that you toot your own horn. You have to share what you're doing. Yeah, people might think, oh, that's bragging, that's showing off. But you don't have to say, hey, look, I'm so good. You just have to find a way of sharing it that 
doesn't sound like bragging. So, for example, if you were to start a series of um, lessons, maybe micro lessons on public speaking, and you say these are being shared by the world's best speaker for 2002, you're not bragging. You're not bragging. But, but at least you're getting mileage out of your achievement. So that is the life lesson for today. Pushing you, your brand is not bragging. You, you <laughs> have to push your brand. If you don't do it, nobody else is going to do it for you. That's so true. Great. So let's move on to today's lesson. What is it that I'm talking about? That is the most critical factor in my humble opinion. The most critical point that will help you grow from being a small business person to being a medium-sized to large business person or from being a solopreneur or a hasslepreneur to running an actual business. It is S-Y-S-T-E-M. S-Y-S-T-E-M. System. You need systems in your business. I look at system as an acronym, as an abbreviation that stands for save your self time, effort, and money. Save yourself time, effort, and money. Save yourself time, effort, and it's, money. It's next to impossible for you to grow if you don't have systems. It's absolutely critical. The sad part is that most people get, I mean, once you say system, they think of a big company. They think of something extremely complicated, something that is small business, that is out of reach to a small business. And that is a misconception that you need to disabuse yourself of. As I said at the beginning, you are probably small because you don't have systems. Mm -hmm. It's not that you don't have systems because you're small. No, it's the other way around. So, what are systems? Systems are basically documented, written down ways of doing things in this organization. In such a way that we consistently do things the same way. We've got a standard way of operating. And because of that, we can easily train someone to do the steps that need to be done. And because of that, the business doesn't depend on one or two or a few individuals. You know, there's that expression, I don't know if you'd know it, Kufakwe Mujoni Kambai Varwi. Right. So, but there are businesses right now where Kufakwe Mujoni Kambai Noto Varwa Zotorova. That's the end of it. Yeah. So, let me share with you uh, very simple approaches to setting up systems in your business. The first thing you need are what are called policies. Now, policies are rules of how we do things here. Mm -hmm. If you have a policy, let's say that says, uh, as a policy, we ensure uh, that uh, we provide top-notch customer service. That's a rule, that's a policy, and you can define it further to say, what we mean by top-notch quality service is that when somebody phones, we immediately phone them. If somebody leaves a message, we return their call. Whatever, whatever, all those things you define. But the policy is a rule, and anyone who joins will read and know and will be trained that this is our policy here. Does it take a big company to write how we do things here? These are our rules? No, it doesn't. Mm -hmm. You can have a policy about hiring. When it comes to hiring staff for managerial positions, we hire people who have a minimum of a bachelor's degree from a university. That's, that is a policy. That is a rule. And we adhere to it. So what you need to say is, in my company, what are the most important rules that we want to adhere to? What are the most important rules for selling, for customer relationship management, for hiring and training? What are the most important rules? And you don't have to start with 20 or 10. Start with one or two. Write them down. Are we together? So from policies, we then drill down to procedures. Mm -hmm. Now procedures are the step-by-step -step actions that you need to follow in a sequence uh, sorry 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 from policy we go to processes i jumped a step there just rewind policy process, process okay. so the process is a sequence of the actions that you need to take in order to achieve a certain activity right so you can say our process when you when we recruit someone Mm -hmm. Here is our process. So we, we spoke about a policy. We recruit people with a minimum of this qualification for these kind of positions, right? Once we've recruited the person, we can also have a, um, a process that says when we recruit, we will have an onboarding and training uh, uh, process. So when you come in, there is a process whereby you will be introduced, say, to your immediate supervisor. And then after being introduced to your immediate supervisor, you'll go for a briefing. Maybe you'll go and spend half a day with each of the different departments so you've got an overall appreciation of everything that happens in the organization. 
And then at the end of the day, maybe you will have a test that will just assess to the extent to which you've understood what you need to do and how you need to do it. And then you'll be assigned to somebody who will handhold you. That is the process. And as you can see, it is being done in a sequence, uh, step by step. So from a process, we now go down even lower to a procedure. So the procedure comprises the nitty gritty steps of each of the activities in a process. So we spoke about a procedure, uh, a, a policy about how we hire people. And then we spoke about a process for onboarding or welcoming those people on board in our company. And the next thing is when we do that onboarding, we now have different activities that make up the onboarding. Firstly, maybe we have the briefing or the first meeting with your supervisor. And we have guidelines to the supervisor. These are the things you need to mention. These are the things that the person needs to know on that date. Now, that is a procedure. That's the nitty-gritty things. Maybe from there, the person then spends half a day in different departments. Each of those departments know what needs to be done. They have got assets. By assets, we're talking of pro formers we're talking of forms that they have to fill in uh we're talking of uh, maybe step by step summary instructions that somebody needs to go through so when you go there at each of these different places that are part of the process of onboarding you are following a procedure and that makes sure that you don't get to this place and nobody knows what to do with you or nobody knows what to tell you because it is all written down and people are adhering to it. Now, why is this important? Mm -hmm. This is important because, number one, it makes it easy for you to grow without relying on individuals. It removes the, the, that reliance on specific individuals Love because that. as long as it is written down, you can train people on it and those people can master it. So that's one. You can grow beyond individuals. Number two, you can maintain standards. You now have quality standards and you're saying, this is how we do things here. And it's written down. So it doesn't leave anything to chance. It means you can measure the people's performance objectively. You are measuring objectively, consistently. Number three, you can use this as a basis for training people. So now you can come up with training programs that are addressing all sorts of needs in your company so that that training is speaking to the policy you have put in place it is speaking to the processes that, in, that are in place, and it's also speaking to the procedures. So at the end of the day, it reduces guesswork. Whether I like you or not, uh, as your supervisor, I can see you're doing this, that we say you must do. You are adhering to the policies. You are executing all the tasks, all the steps in the procedure. And as a result of that, I have no option but to say you're doing a good job. So this is the basis, in my humble opinion, of how you build a business. There's a second part to it. That's not to do with systems. Mm -hmm. And I felt I really, really need to cover this. And that is to do with compliance. Do you know that sick feeling you get in your gut when you are approaching a police roadblock <laughs> and you know that your things are not in order? Yes. <laughs> what I've discovered is that a lot of people think they are taking shortcuts, but they end up paying more. You pay more for non-compliance. If you're not adhering to the rules and the laws and you don't have your paperwork in line, you end up paying a higher price. Mm -hmm. So uh, if you are serious about growing from being a hasslepreneur or just being a solopreneur, running your business as a sole uh, business owner and you want to grow, I strongly urge you to pursue compliance. Uh, at the end of the day, wherever you go, people will take advantage of you when you don't comply. Because they'll say, yeah, you don't have this, so maybe, you know, what can we do? So if you are looking at growing from being a solopreneur or being a, a business owner on your own, you need, those two things are critical to me. Number one, you need systems. And the systems start by just you looking at what are the things that, that we do? What are the main activities we do in this, in, in this business? And then number two, you need to make sure you're complying. The moment you find that you, your hustle is, um, let, let me say, uh, it, it's, it's viable. You know what I mean by viable? In other words, the money you are making is able to meet your costs, your expenses. Then 
it's the right time. If you are listening to me right now and you've got a company or you've got a business, uh, whether it's a registered company or not, and that business is month on month making generally uh, making some profit or at least breaking even, in other words, you're viable, then you are a suitable candidate for what I'm talking about then you are in the right place to start implementing systems. You are in the right place to look at how you can formalize your business and how you can make sure that you are complying with all the laws. In fact, right now, it has gotten so hard. For example, if you don't have a tax clearance, uh, then companies are required to deduct 30%, 30% from the money that you have invoiced when they pay you. So it doesn't help you in any way uh, not to comply with the regulations. Right, so if you're listening to this and uh, you feel this is something that can help you, tell you what, we've got a group called the Success Family where we have people who are interested mostly in personal development, but I'm finding more and more that almost all the people who are involved in personal development also are running a business of some sort. Mm. So we invite you to join the Success Family if you'd like to. It's absolutely free and all you have to do is send a WhatsApp message with the word join, J. O I N. I've had a number of people say saying joy. It's joy. Mm -hmm. J O I N. You send we want that joy, but they, they want help joy. <laughs> type joy. <laughs> yeah. So you send that to the number zero seven seven three zero five six seven three six. I'll repeat that zero seven seven three zero five six seven three six. Let me pause at this point. Any comment or question? Over to you, V Candy. Jonah, thank you so much. Uh, from hustler to business owner, it's important for us to um, get our territories enlarged and to really be intentional. Like you're saying, you can't stumble upon it. Upon growth, you have to be intentional. So thank you so much for, for these nuggets. Um, we're live on Facebook. You can go watch this. Um, you can go share it with someone as well. Um, the, the actions that you can take to ensure that your business outlives your existence and uh, also that you achieve your business goals. And yeah, it's really, really uh, some good, good information. Thank you so much, Jonah. Jonah. Oh, thank Joy. you. You're welcome. You're welcome. <laughs> Join. <laughs> Join. <laughs> thank you so much. A short in the arm jest with the Dr. Oden. We get to do this again next week, same time. Right here on Star FM. Sounding good all the time. Taking our time to exactly 10 o'clock Star FM.